On a uh, no carb, no carb diet, your cholesterol goes up, your LDL goes up. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Because so does your HDL comes up also. Your triglycerides go way down. So is that necessarily a bad thing for the LDL to go up on a low carb or no carb diet? So I have several, about five or six YouTube videos addressing that. So let's dissect that out. So first is that LDL is called the bad cholesterol. I really call it the other good cholesterol because calling it the bad cholesterol is essentially wrong. Now why do I say that? Um, LDL does a lot of good things. Let, let's kind of talk about like, uh, or maybe to get the audience involved, let me ask people around the audience, tell me one good thing that LDL does. Fights infection. Fights infection, excellent. So it neutralizes bacteria and viruses. LDL is just like the cells in the body, it has a membrane, it has receptors, it can bind to and neutralize bacteria and viruses. And in fact, studies have shown that higher LDL people have lower risks of infection, also lower risks of cancers. Okay, one other benefit. It creates hormones? Correct, excellent. So LDL supplies cholesterol to the testis and the ovaries and the, what most people don't realize is that testosterone and estrogens are cholesterol byproducts. They are made from cholesterol. And for one reason or the other, the testis and the, and the ovaries don't have enough cholesterol they make to convert them to testosterone. So people who are taking statins will have a reduction in free and total testosterone. So that was the second benefit. Let's talk about another benefit. It helps your brain cells. So it helps your brain cells. So Let's talk about the brain cells, and it's an important thing that you brought up. So if I were to ask you guys, what is the organ in the body that has the highest amount of cholesterol? What would you say? It's the brain. 25% of the body's cholesterol is in the brain. Yet if you go and ask most doctors about brain cholesterol metabolism, they'll be completely unaware of it because there is something in our body called the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is there in the brain to protect the brain because our blood can sometimes have bacteria, can have viruses, and it doesn't, the body wants the brain not to get infected. So the blood-brain barrier is there as a protective mechanism. So the cholesterol that you eat in animal food and if you're just purely on a vegetarian diet, the liver will say, you're not eating cholesterol, let me make cholesterol, so the liver puts out cholesterol. That cholesterol never makes it to the brain because there's a blood-brain barrier that prevents cholesterol from crossing from the blood into the brain. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the entirety of cholesterol in the brain is made through about 25 different enzymatic steps. There's a factory in the brain with 25 different stations where the cholesterol is being made. And the cholesterol that is made is made from raw material, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. S2S state is one of the early products. And yet, if you ask a physician who's giving you a cholesterol medicine, he would be completely unaware of this and most of the time they will be unaware that statins, the medicines that we use to re reduce cholesterol, they cross the blood-brain barrier. So when they cross the blood-brain barrier, you say, I said there are 25 different steps. Where do you think statins stop cholesterol production? Early in the cascade of early in the assembly line or further out in the assembly line? Early about the fifth step. So it's important to know that not only are you stopping cholesterol production, but you're also stopping production of a very important enzyme, I shouldn't say enzyme, a compound that is derived from cholesterol 
that makes the brain use energy. It converts sugar or glucose that the brain uses into usable energy currency called ATP. So while it's making cholesterol, it's making another substance that, let, that lets the brain convert the food that you're eating into energy. What is that substance? CoQ10, CoQ exactly. So CoQ10 is a cholesterol byproduct. Does CoQ10 look, you say, okay, I'll just take extra CoQ10. I'll just pop it in. Will that cross the blood brain barrier? It will not, it will not. So why is cholesterol important for the brain? The reason it's important is because one brain cell talks to another brain cell through cholesterol connections. So the neuroreceptors, they are embedded in a part of the brain membrane that is cholesterol rich. So you lose the orientation of how the receptors are oriented so one brain cell does not talk to another. What is another reason why cholesterol medicines can potentially reduce communication between brain cells? Because the brain is starved of energy. It's not able to burn because it doesn't have enough CoQ10. So often when you take statins, you have memory impairment, cognitive impairment. I have a friend who's a neurologist who had a stent in his heart and got placed on 40 milligrams of Lipitor. And I asked him, are you just as sharp as you used to be? And he says, no, it takes me a little longer to process information. So like, for example, when you become an expert at something, you just look at it, like you just look at an EKG and you immediately know what it is. You just look at a brain scan and you immediately know what it is. If it's taking you longer to process that information, if you're having some memory issues. I've had several accountants who said, I used to be able to do these calculations rapidly, now I am kind of second guessing myself. So how many doctors who prescribe cholesterol medicines actually talk to their patients about cognitive and memory impairment? Zero. I mean, I have not come across any. So that's the third thing. Right? So we talked about testosterone, we talked about memory, and we talked about CoQ10 as well. There was one other that I'm missing. But tell me another effect that uh, LDL helps the body with. It splits sunlight into vitamin D. So maybe, I'm not sure about that, but what Nina is saying is that uh, vitamin D is a cholesterol byproduct. And I have not really come across data that shows that people on statins have lower levels of vitamin D, but it is possible. So what is the most, uh, tell me a few common diseases we have in, in this country. Dementia. Dementia is there. Another one. Oh, diabetes. diabetes. Do you think that having a lower LDL will increase the risks of you becoming a diabetic? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so there are studies after studies that show that when you take statins and you reduce your LDL cholesterol, you are much more likely to become a diabetic. But that's not the only issue, okay? The other issue is that there is a genetic disorder in which the body picks up the cholesterol from the bloodstream, just takes it up in the liver. It's a, it's a disease called PCSK9 deficiency, which many of our doctors think it's a blessing. So these people who have PCSK9 deficiency are picking up the LDL, picking up the VLDL. Now VLDL is a kind of a, a lipoprotein. So we have to differentiate between lipoprotein and cholesterol. I'll do that in a second. But just basically think that LDL is a lipoprotein that is cholesterol rich, and VLDL is a lipoprotein that is triglyceride rich. That means it's fat rich. So the body, especially the liver and the pancreas, suck up the LDL 
or cholesterol and triglycerides from the bloodstream and reduce their levels in these patients. These are a small group of people who have inherited a low cholesterol level because of something called PCSK9 deficiency. So, PCSK9, PCSK9. So I want you to guess from what I have told you, these individuals who are PCSK9 deficient, who have lower levels of cholesterol and lower levels of triglycerides, are they heavier than their compatriots who have normal levels of PCSK9? They are. Do, have a, do they have a higher risk of having fatty liver? Yes, they do. Is there a higher risk of them becoming a diabetic? Yes, they do, absolutely, okay? So that is another good thing about LDL cholesterol that we have talked about. Fights infection, uh, prevents diabetes, CoQ10 comes from it, testosterone comes from it, cholesterol is vitally important for the brain. Okay, now many people, and I'm kind of expanding it because that's such an important question, and I have had several YouTube videos about it. Now many people talk about oxidized LDL. They say, Dr. Riley, we want to reduce oxidized LDL because oxidized LDL will cause heart disease. So what is oxidized LDL? So in order to explain oxidized LDL, you have to come to another favorable benefit of LDL molecule, which is called inflammation. So do you know what inflammation is? Inflammation is places in the body, like if you get injured, you get a scab and then it's followed by redness and increased blood flow. Systemic inflammation is also there. Would it surprise you if I told you that LDL is an anti-inflammatory drug? It carries antioxidants in it, like vitamin E. It carries CoQ10 in it. The very coat of the LDL is also something that neutralizes inflammation. Now, if there is a lot of inflammation and LDL gets overwhelmed, it consumes its CoQ10, it consumes its vitamin E, and then it sacrifices itself to reduce inflammation, it is then called an oxidized LDL. Okay? So I have a YouTube video that talks about is oxidized LDL an injured firefighter or an arsonist? Okay, is oxidized LDL an injured firefighter or an arsonist? So in my opinion, the oxidized LDL is an injured firefighter. It went in there to help you where you needed it. And it got injured in the process, it got oxidized in the process, it's not an arsonist. All of medical profession thinks that it's an arsonist. So a normal LDL molecule will be picked up by the liver cells, will be picked up by the pancreas, will be picked up by the testis. But oxidized LDL has modification of receptors in which the liver no longer picks it up. The reason for that is that it's injured. There are separate mechanisms through which the body scavenges something that is damaged, picks it up and removes it from circulation. So it's picked up by a blood cell called macrophage. So go look at that YouTube video and stuff like that. So in my opinion, LDL is the wrong thing we are looking at. When LDL is damaged, when LDL is small in size, it's an indication that you have metabolic dysfunction. That means you have insulin resistance, you have inflammation, your fat cells are unhealthy. It is not that you want to correct that LDL, you want to correct the underlying problem, you want to correct the root cause. Now, when you go on a fasting diet, I mean intermittent fasting, when you go on a low-carb diet, when you combine that with exercise, 
exactly what you mentioned happens. The triglycerides, which is fat and blood, goes down. The HDL, which many people call the good cholesterol, goes up. And in a substantial proportion of patients, the LDL goes up, but it improves in quality. You will have larger and fluffy LDL molecules. You may have less oxidized LDL particles. And all of medical profession thinks that that is bad, that you're, you're killing yourself. But there is data that has been there from before and there is data that is emerging now, which is coming along through the work of Dave Feldman. And I don't know, how many of you know Dave Feldman? I was gonna ask okay, good, about excellent. Okay, so I'll let you ask that question about Dave Feldman. <laughs> but there are several studies. There's a Hunt trial in Netherlands that shows that as total cholesterol goes up, so this is an important factor. When total cholesterol goes up, LDL will go up. There's no choice. Total cholesterol is a surrogate marker of LDL. So in a population of 50,000 patients from teenage years to 70s, as the total cholesterol went up, mortality went down. People started dying less. There is other trials that have been put out by Malcolm Kendrick and others that show that higher total cholesterol is associated with lower mortality. There is um, the oldest university in the world, which is in the town of Leiden in Netherlands, Leiden, Netherlands, that has done a study in patients between 85 and 95 years of age who were followed for 10 years. And the highest survival was in people with the highest cholesterol. The lowest risk of cancer rate was in the people with highest cholesterol the lowest risks of dying from infections, old people die of pneumonias, was in people with the highest cholesterol. 